play has been a little bit better. Yeah, what without like saying the team or the or the, or the city, what is maybe like one of the worst like things you were given to eat? Um, just because I when people think of the minor leagues, and I we'll talk about your tweet in a quick second here, but people were people I don't know if fans are really understand like I would say the hardship, the struggle, and I get it. A lot of people say it's just a game, but at the same time, you guys are individuals, you're humans with you know human emotions and needs yeah. and stuff. Um, what is some of the more like disappointing like things you were given because i know i don't know if you saw that that picture that was going around uh the, the oakland a's had like a bag with like a, like a really nasty looking sandwich in it for their minor leaguers it was kind of circling uh social media a couple maybe like right at the beginning of last season um <laughs> what were some of the worst things you, oh, you guys been given i mean if if it... If we weren't professional athletes in, in, in this situation, it doesn't sound it doesn't sound ridiculous because what yeah. it is isn't that bad. But being for what the situation was and who we are, it, it's crazy. Um, in between the double header, um, we were we were fed hot dogs, lace chips, and ice cream. That was a <laughs> in between a double header. You know, in the middle of July. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's like you, that's what you want sitting in your in your stomach. Uh, we had a a road clubhouse manager feed us. It was some kind of tuna salad or mm-hmm. tuna something. It was like three inches of liquid. Oh. Like it was like the grossest thing. I, I have a picture of it on my phone because I like I was like I was like that is something I'll never forget. I wanted to like people people say like these questions like boom dude look at this like that's what yeah. we were forced to eat. So it's like you know it's uh it's peanut butter sandwich basically at that time. Um, yeah. Stuff like that. I mean we have oh dude I mean there was uh there's just it just became so regular that it didn't even it doesn't like unless it's like stuff like that that really sticks out like yep everything was so average or below average subpar that it just became peanut butter sandwich day in and day out if there was lunch meat turkey sandwich turkey sandwich ham sandwich t- peanut butter it's like you know in, in in the hard part is then you gotta turn on tell that guy like hey man thanks for your service for the week you know like here's your money yeah. but it's like yeah how do you what tip I, somebody after them giving yeah, you I, that what nasty? Am paying, what am I paying you for? Like, yeah. bro, half the time I get my laundry back and it's soaking wet and I got to put this on and go play in a game and then I'm eating your liquid sandwich. Like, that, it's just like, it's crazy. But like, you know, like you said, people want to jump on, like jump on me in that tweet. And like part of that tweet was like me being sarcastic. You know, mm-hmm. this is the first time we have a conversation, but I'm a sarcastic person. Like I'm messing around. Like you go through yeah. the rest of my timeline, you could probably pick that up. Like, mm-hmm, and. Mm-hmm. Mostly the, the premise of that tweet was complete sarcasm, being like Draymond, bro, like, you'll be okay. There's, you know, like, it, it's all good, dude. Like, um, you know, and then the other premise was, like, for people that don't understand, like, they just see you being recognized by a team, an organization for being good to be enough to be drafted to, to play. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they see your, you know, let's say accolades or they see you rising through a system. Well, it's like, to them, it's baseball only. They don't understand that there's such another, uh, you know, aspect to yeah. what it takes to just be on that field. And, uh, you know, I was just kind of, in a way, trying to bring awareness, I guess, to what it's like to go through those bottom levels. Like, it's not all, you know, cake all the way through. And, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, you get the triple A and you can treat it a little bit better. But, like, man, in double A, the week, at, you know, two weeks ago when I was in double A, I was taking a bus eight hours through the night. Same thing, you know, kind of sit, same kind of situation. So, um you know, there really is the, the jump from from AAA to the big leagues, obviously not having experienced it, but, you know, talking with buddies, talking with teammates, seeing it on social media, whatever. Um, you know, obviously that jump is, you know, gigantic, but yeah, um, yeah, it's just, it's just crazy. It's such, it's such a different, um, you know, it's such a different experience of, um, you know, hopefully I get to see the, the other side of it, you know, the other side of the fence, I guess you could say, but man, mm-hmm. the minor league side is, it's not, it's not too glorious by any means. Yeah, for those who didn't didn't, didn't see that, that tweet, and definitely follow you on on Twitter. You're you're an interesting follow here. I enjoy enjoy it. Um, Draymond tweeted, "Fly in the day of the game after playing a game the night before and play a game." Wow. And then you you quote tweeted him in pro baseball. You take a bus ten hours through the night after a game from North Carolina to New Jersey, sleep in a one star hotel for maybe five hours, get up to go to the field and play for seven hundred a month. Draymond. And I was just scrolling through my timeline and I saw that and it stood out to me. I'm like, wow, okay. Um, and then it got 
almost 100 quote tweets, over 10,000 likes, over 1,000 retweets, and it kind of blew up a little bit. Uh, and I'm like, okay, I got to reach out to you because that's and that's when I did. I'm like, this is I want to talk to you about this because, um, like I said, I, I before I told before I recorded, I was telling you I had um, a Dr. Minor Leaguer on here, uh, the founder of that organization and that non for profit coming on to talk about how he and his uh, nonprofit they're helping minor leaguers and they're getting sponsors and they're kind of going through that process of illuminating the struggles that minor leaguers do have. And um, I was asking him, like, what are some of the like the pushback that you may get? And what he was saying was that there are people who say, well, look, these guys are just playing a game. If they don't like it, then tell them to get like a real job or tell them to stop playing or, or you know, things like that. I'm sure even in, in your tweet and like retweets in the comments and your mentions, I saw similar like that same idea and the mentality from player or from fans who are like, well, then don't you know, no one's making you do this. Um, were, did you get a lot of like negative negative pushback from that? Yeah, I mean, there was, there was, I mean, I, I couldn't even imagine being like a LeBron James or something like that because, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I did the, the, the people that are fighting each other, like not even mm-hmm. going at me, they're like fighting each other over like baseball and basketball, like in, in, in mm-hmm. the mentions. And I'm like, bro, I'm like, could you imagine being LeBron? And every time you post anything, this is what happens on every single plat- like platform. It's like, it's crazy. But um, yeah, I mean, it was, I would say it was like, 50 50 negative to people kind of like sticking up for minor leaguers or for baseball or whatever you want to say. But yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, I didn't really care for that part of it because that, that wasn't what the reason behind me posting right. that was, but um, you know, it, it, like you said, so many people want to be like, Oh, you're playing a kid's game. You're playing yep. a game. It's get, get a real job. Like, well, the thing is like, I so badly wanted to message back every single one of those people saying, well, if it's such a kid's game and, or it's, it's a game, like, mm-hmm. why aren't you playing it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's, there's like, you know, you, you want to say that and you want to be like a keyboard hero. Sure. But like, yep. it, it comes down to it is if realistically, if you were able to keep playing a, a, a sport or an instrument, if, if, if that's what your true passion was, um, if it was just that simple, you would still be doing it. You wouldn't be mm-hmm. grinding nine to five and being miserable, you know, clapping back at people on, on, on social media, you know what yep. I mean? So, um, you know, you know, there's, there's people out there like that, but there also was another, another portion of people that somewhat understood the process and that were, um, I guess you could say sticking up for baseball in a mm-hmm. way. But again, that's not what I like. I wasn't looking for like pity. I was just like, I'm being sarcastic and, um, you know, if anything, trying to bring about a little bit of awareness to, to where you got to come from just to get to that point. And, um, you know, it is what it is, but. Right. Well, Hey, I mean, I do appreciate people who are taking their time to stand up for those who are in the minor leagues, um, and you, now that you're kind of on the cusp of, of going to the majors, you can also kind of advocate for those who are in the minors. Because I feel like there is a, a shift in mentality of it used to be, you know, you pay your dues um, through you kind of hustle and grind through the minors to get to the major, to major leagues. And now it's more of a let's try to help out these guys so that they can focus on just becoming ball players and not have to worry so much about what are they going to eat and where are they going to sleep? Are they going to have to share room with three, four guys or a three bedroom apartment with seven or eight guys. And I feel like there's more of uh, an awareness and uh, a shift in, in thinking and the mentality that, that we as fans and even as players in, in professional baseball, that we need to support the minor leaguers and minor leaguers like yourself who need to focus on how to be a better player instead of you know what am i going to eat am i going to get a sandwich am i going to get liquid whatever you (laughs) whatever they fed you in the clubhouse yeah um what what are you before we hop off here what are your thoughts on that shift um and maybe um what what would you like to be seen done by organizations such as you know more than baseball uh adopt a minor leaguer in in uh, fans who want to um kind of help and assist players going through that that climb to get to eventually reach their goals of becoming becoming a major leaguer um you know and it's and it's it's awesome what a lot of those non-for-profit you know guys are doing and mm-hmm. i think that's really really cool um you know and i appreciate what they're trying to do because that's that's really important to, to, to a lot of guys there's guys that don't get a bonus that you know maybe they get a sponsor and they're getting you know meal gift cards every couple of weeks from someone or, or whatever um so you know, to them, that might be literally getting them through playing baseball. I mean, I've, I've seen a handful of guys that had to quit because they literally couldn't afford to play anymore, which yeah. is which is crazy. I mean, we had a kid 
my first full season in, in low A. We went through all the spring training, um, flew across the country from Arizona, North Carolina. And like the day before the first game, um, or the day of the first game, I get to the field. And I'm like, yo, where's Kyle at? And mm-hmm. they're like, oh, he had to retire. I'm like, what do you mean? Wow. He had to retire? They're like, um, you know, uh, he found out that his student loans were going to start kicking in, um, starting oh. whatever next week or something. Um, and he literally just like couldn't afford to live here, like and pay the rent and then also pay off his student loans while playing. So like he had to quit and like go home and like, he's going to try to get a job. It's like, wow, dude, like that is, that's crazy. Like, mm-hmm. um, but like the one that kills me is, um, our pitching coach in double a this past year's named Richard Dotson, um, dot played like 10 or 11 years in the big leagues in like the seventies, eighties, nineties. Um, and dot told me in like whatever the year was 85 or something. Um, actually it probably would have been late, late seventies. So his like last year's of, of the minor leagues. Um, he said in double a, he made $800 a month, which in 1970 wow. something, um, is probably like relatively equivalent to what we're getting right now. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, I, I said, dot, so what was, what was the minor league or the major league minimum salary you're, like rookie year, I think mm-hmm. he, I, I don't quote me, but I believe he said it was around sixty, somewhere between sixty and eighty thousand. So you look at that now, and that minor league salaries have gone from eight hundred in Double A to, I think it's about sixteen hundred in Double A. So that's doubled roughly, and that major league salary has gone from sixty or eighty thousand to five hundred and seventy thousand roughly. Wow! So it's like, you know, it seems like everything around minor league baseball. Um, has has you know developed and gone along except for mm-hmm. minor league baseball 